Dave Grohl. Hello. Hi. Jeez, what a moment. Let's talk about, I mean, we're four days away here in New Zealand from your 10th studio album, Medicine at Midnight. What a journey that's been, because you've been sitting on that for nearly a year, haven't you? Yeah, we finished this album in February of 2020 uh, with, like, great hopes of this two-year-long world domination tour that we had booked. And then everything just went... And then we just kind of waited. Now, and as months went by, um, we realized that there wasn't any going back to normal anytime soon. And I really started thinking about why we make records. We're musicians that fell in love with music when we were young and started writing music to share with other people because that's that really is the greatest reward is to you know write something and then let it out into the world so maybe other people connect to it or understand your emotion and um, you know the fact that the whole machine and all of that that the process that we're used to has been taken away. I was like, well, who cares about that? Like, we wrote this music for people to get down to. Yeah. So let's give it to them and just get down, you know? So it feels great that it's actually finally happening. Let's just talk about that from a personal perspective of where you're sitting at the moment, because you left school at 17 to follow the rock and roll dream. It's not just something that you do, it's, it's part of you, and yet you have not been able to go out on stage and, and do that for a long time. Have you, have you felt like, you know, there's a big part of you missing right now? Um, yes and no. We've been touring for 25 years hard, man. We tour hard and it's a huge part of what we do. We take pride in our live shows, but there's all these other things that I've been able to do and learn uh, in the last year that I'm very thankful for. Different musicians that you would not expect have emailed me and said like, hey dude, let's, let's get weird. Let's do a side project. <laughs> I'm just sitting at home. And to me, that's what that's what a creative mind should and would do. Yeah. It's like, okay, adapt to this weird situation and get weird and make something cool. And yeah. that's what happened. Not to mention the um, uh, uh, just the, the ability to for the girls to have dad around a little bit more as well. I imagine that that's a two way reward system. I mean, you know, and then there's the same. There's the, the, uh, part of them. I'm sure it's like, wait, is. Is the pandemic over? Because you should go on tour. You've been at home too. Get back to work, Dad. Like, Come on. Like, call Dr. Fauci. Get, get him on this. Get out on the road. Please go. Talk me through it, Dave. We're on the other side of this. Your side of stage, the warm up acts played, the lights are going down, they're, they're chanting your name, the stage manager's giving you the nod, and you're walking back out onto that stage. How's that going to feel? Talk me through that moment. First of all, you perfectly described the dream I've been having once a week for the last year, okay? That's like, that's a recurring dream that I have. Exactly that. Here's what I would imagine. The house lights go out, the people go nuts, I walk out on stage, and I tell the lighting guy to turn the house lights back up because I want to see everybody. Like, I haven't seen you in a year, a year and a half, however long it's been. I want to see each other. And let's just sit there and stare at each other for three <laughs> minutes, face to face to face. Let's do that first. And then I'll start playing a song. Beautiful. And it'll be a song that we can all sing along to. To have that feeling back again, it'll be the most cathartic, rewarding reunion. And then we'll just blast off and play another two and a half hours. The little hairs on the back of my neck um, stood up just hearing you talk <laughs> through that. Now, I've, I've got artists and promoter friends here, and they've talked of the incredible energy coming out of uh, lockdown and, and what that means on stage. So I can only imagine what it's like for, for an act that once caused an earthquake here in Auckland that registered on the seismic charts, what that's going to mean for fans around the world. Yeah, I, I, I cannot wait to see everyone again. And obviously, we've had a very special relationship with New Zealand for 25 years, you know, from playing, what was that that place? It was like a big circus tent. Oh, the Big Top. Still to this day, the loudest audience reaction I've ever experienced in my entire life. When the audience went, wow, it made your ears, like, tremble like a kazoo. It was insane. <laughs> and... The fact that we triggered a seismic event, yes, we have that readout on the wall at our studio. Brilliant. So there aren't too many places that can brag of both of those things. Like one of them would be enough, but the both of those things happened in New Zealand. So believe me when I say, the second 
that someone offers me a plane ticket to come to a show there, I will be there. And I can't wait. Perfect way to sign this off. Thank you so much, Dave. See you around, my man. See you soon.